So welcome everybody. Welcome to a new human experience podcast. Today is February the 10th, 2022. The topic for this evening is the emotional body. As I mentioned last week that for the, off the, the month of February, the um, kind of the main topic is about inner knowing. And part of the inner knowing is really from our emotional body. So before I, I talk more about the emotional body, I just want to kind of um, give a disclaimer first. That just to, to say that this, what I'm, I'm going to say about the emotional body is really my current understanding of the emotional body. It is, I'm not claiming that this is, Def, it is the truth and nothing but I'm actually more um, aware that it is simply a useful model that I like that that helps me to understand my own emotional um, ups and downs and and as long as it's useful for me then then I'll keep it as it is and it is more likely to transform and change as I transform and change as well. So if any part of, of um, my understanding of the emotional body resonates with you, then great. Please feel free to borrow all or any part of it. And if it does not resonate, then it's also great. Please let me know about what you think the emotional body is, what your understanding is, so that it will help me to get a broader sense of what it is as well. <clears throat> so now that the disclaimer part is, is over, so I just want to, to mention, um, start talking about the emotional body. Now, our physical body, which is kind of the, the main topic for last week, our physical body is kind of nurtured and powered by energy. Everything that we do, whether we breathe in air or when we eat food, when we take supplements, when we go um, for a walk, when we go get some sunshine, when we read books or any kind of material, it's all just um, input to our energetic system because as we consume things, whether it is um, food for our body or whether it is understanding and knowing from books from other people or from talking to other people and, and gaining from their experience these all translates to energy because that's all we are in our body is really made up of energy various forms of energies so our energetic body is a subtle body. So what do I mean by subtle body? Our, so let me just give a contrast. Is that our physical body has a frame. It has bones that kind of um, come together. And then there are muscles and, and skin and organs and other organs that kind of goes around our skeleton <clears throat> and that's what really make up our physical body so our physical body has a structure the structure mainly being the the, the skeleton part of it and then there are um, other things that go around that structure so there is a, a design to it that we can see and feel. Whereas our energetic body is subtle in a way that it does not have anything that is um, that we can see with our physical eye. Of course, there are people who 
are sensitive and they will be able to see energy. However, not everyone can do that. So that's what I mean by subtle body. The, the energetic body is a subtle body in that it really takes um, special care in order to be able to detect and feel it. So that's what I mean by subtle body. And our emotional body is a subset of our energetic body. So the emotional body is, is part of the subtle body. You, we may not be able to see our emotions, but we can certainly feel it within ourselves and also feel it from other people by talking to them or just being close to them. We'll be able to sense at least some of the more obvious emotions that the, each person is um, displaying very vividly. So we can think of the emotional body as really energy in motion. So this energy may move you forward or hold you back, or it may um, do any other configuration depending on the circumstances. But when you consciously work with your emotional body, you can reveal a lot of things that were that have been unconscious to you before. So what really makes up the emotional body? I should say that actually, I don't really know what makes up the emotional body. Or a better way to say that is that there are so many variables that um, really we can't really say for sure yet, or at least I don't know of any, anyone who's, who, who kind of definitely has defined that this, these things are the emotional body. And so everything is kind of just um, by feel. A human, human being is really a a combination of a couple of things. We, we have a body, we have a spirit, and we also have a mental body or our mind as well. So which means that we are not a homogenous being. <clears throat> so imagine, for example, that you are a happy-go-lucky spirit from a very high vibration and harmonious planet. And you really have a, had a great life. And at the end of that life, you went back to spirit and you decided that somehow you really want to be a part of Earth's shifting into a next level of playground. So, so you wanted to come to earth. And so you took on a number of veils of forgetfulness or of different um, programming that transforms your native or um, resident energy and frequency and vibration to something that is able to work well in earth environment currently. So you came down here, you took on all of those things. Um, so, and then for the first couple of months of your um, experience on earth, let's say the first nine months, your earthly experience in your mother's womb where all of your needs were met. Everything is provided for. You are able to um, feel being a part of something, a part of your mother and hearing your mother's um, heartbeat or maybe other things. And, 
and being able to um, soak up all that you needed to know in order to become part of this family, the new family. And then after nine months, all of a sudden, you, you kind of, um, you are born. And no matter how harmonious your birth may be, however, it is still a major shift because when you're in your mother's womb, everything is being provided for you. All of your needs met. You don't have to ask for anything. Everything as you need them, it will be provided. Whereas once you're out of the womb, it's a totally different story. You felt this separation. And, and so as a body, if you just think of it from, from your body's point of view, it is a big change. And so your body is coping with this, this change. And, and so it's from then on, it's, it's kind of all downhill from there. Because most of the time when we were just, when we were born, we, yes, we have learned some things about our family while we are in our mother's womb. However, it's, it's, we still don't quite know how to handle ourselves, handle all of that um, feeling of being separate or maybe even abandonment, um, fear, your needs not being met, all of those, those things are, will start to bombard your tiny body. And so it changes you. And that's really what um, is the, the, the foundation of our emotional body is, is that like a lot of these these foundation of our emotional body happened at a time when we are very unconscious. We just came on earth. We don't know a lot of things. We don't know how to um, deal with these emotions that's in that's that's all of a sudden um, pushed in our face. So our emotional body is the foundation is kind of a little shaky. And then as you get older, it, it may, depending on your, how, how conscious your parents um, are, it, it really shapes how you are able to um, deal with this emotional body. So the, the more unconscious your parents are, the less likely that you will be taught how to deal with your own emotions within you in a very um, conscious and constructive and helpful way. So, which means that a lot of us, or I would say, let's say just more than half of us really didn't get that um, all of the knowledge on how to handle our own emotional body. And then as we get older, we are, um, we have more, opportunities to, to experience our emotions. However, all of the other circumstances, experiences, is really on top of our foundation. And if our foundation is not very solid, then the rest is just going to add on to the confusion. So this is really how the, 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 the basis of our emotional body is, is that I'm, what I'm trying to say is that most of us really don't have a very good handle on our emotions and because emotions are 
So it could be so powerful, especially when we were young, when we have so much more energy is when we felt stunted in a certain way, when we felt blockage in a certain way. And we have so much energy raging in us and when we're young, then that can really um, throw us off on a very different path. So, so layers and layers of the, our emotional body is being piled on top of, of each other until we start to consciously work with our own emotional body. Now, some people are, are just lucky in that they, they may have um, a parent they may perhaps of their own um, their own innate abilities, they can handle their own emotions better. But not everybody is that lucky. So how do we start to tame this unconscious and chaotic mess of emotions? And also, what is the, the wisdom of emotions? Because if emotions is, is so important and most of us are um, really don't have a good basis of emotions, then what is, what is the, the, the wisdom of this emotion? Well, first is to understand that um, we have emotions and, and that emotion, the, the emotional foundation was set at a time when we don't really have words to describe what those emotions are. We, we can feel it, but we, we can't describe it with words to someone else. So it is something that is stored within us. And that's, that's really the understanding. First is to understand that. And then the next is that we, um, wherever it is that we feel, there is a trigger somewhere that in our, in some emotionally there we, when there is a blockage, we would, there would be a way to get, that we get triggered. It could be certain words. It could be um, certain people um, in our life. So all different things is the trigger. So then there is this trigger and then there is the reaction and the trigger and the reaction kind of form a pattern. And so our emotions are, you can think of them as being a pattern that has trigger and response. And they and that's that's the initial understanding of what emotions are. So how do we get at the what is the, the wisdom behind the emotions? What are emotions trying to tell us? Um so when we start to consciously work with our emotions, we start to consciously look at what, when we get triggered, we start to consciously look at what is the trigger, whether it is a person or situation. And when we start to consciously notice the trigger and what is our habitual response, a way to react, then we can start to evaluate because the, our trigger and habitual response was usually formed when we were much younger and we have a lot less tools to, or a lot less um, options to play with. 
However, when we get older and we are consciously, when we kind of get old enough to consciously start to work with our emotions, we're at a very different level. So what used to be like a trigger and then a response, we can now go back and analyze and start to ask ourselves questions like, okay, so in the, 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 the olden days when I was young, when my, let's, for example, when my mother talked to me with a certain tone, I would all of a sudden feel completely um, overpowered. I would feel fear. I, I may feel like I'm being criticized and not loved. And so my response would be, for example, to, um, to throw a temper tantrum because that somehow gets my mother's attention and it usually can resolve the, the situation more to my benefit. For example, let's, let's say that that is, that is my response. However, when I get older, when I get to the point where I can go back and look at that, is that, okay, every time when I um, feel threatened, I would just lose my temper. So that may work with my mother, but that may not be the best way to deal with a friend or a boyfriend so or a, a colleague or with my boss. So that usually that trigger and response um, pattern will start to, as we move through our lives into different situation, there would usually be a, a pattern where it's no longer useful. And actually it's, it um, gets us into more trouble than the, the, the trigger may be. So that's when we, are prompted to start to analyze and become more aware of what triggers us. Tone of voice, maybe um, a certain body language. And then our response is to um, throw, like is to lose our temper. So then when we can look at that in a conscious way, then we can start to choose instead of, let's say, instead of losing our temper is to start to have a conversation with the person who makes us feel uncomfortable. So that may be a new response that we can choose so that we can start to break that habitual trigger and response pattern is when we can consciously look at how that pattern does not serve us anymore. And we can start to choose different response, different ways, better ways at a time when we um, have more tools have more options, no more options on how to handle a situation than when we first adopt that pattern. So that's one way of consciously working with our the emotional patterns that we have established in our life is to really go back and evaluate that and we do that for for most healthy people we we would do that if not all the time at least every every five ten years we would um kind of gauge how our reaction is and and what kind of results we're getting from the 
the results we are getting or not getting, we, most of us would start to know to change our way of responding to a, a, a trigger. So that is for, for most people that are, that really have that flexibility. Um, I say for most people and not for all people can because for some people, they, their um, trigger is so traumatic. It's so, it's something that kind of overwhelms them that when something happened, usually when there is a trauma involved, that's when it's, it's that trigger and response seem to be locked in a particular pattern. And that's when you probably need to work with somebody who is, um, much more skilled with or experience with working with resolving the trauma um, in, in terms of really letting go of that fight or flight block that is in your body. Another way of being able to work with our own emotions is that is to remember that we are a mind, body, and spirit combination, which means that there are different ways of looking at the emotional pattern. We can look at it from the body's point of view and really understand because our body, um, usually is not as, it, our body is very instinctual. So our body reacts to things. And when we can really pay attention to when our body feels the trigger and where we, how we would naturally or easily respond that trigger and response pattern when we look at it from the body's point of view then we kind of understand why the things are the way it is from the body's point of view and then another point of view is really to let's it's it's from the mind's point of view which is more the logical side not the body side, but the, the thinking side. Think of, okay, this is the trigger. What's behind it? What, um, when this happens, when somebody talked to me in this tone of voice and hold a certain body language, what comes up for me? What's, what kind of um, beliefs do I have underneath that? that kind of supports me to, to choose to lose my temper, which is the, the, the old pattern of, of absolving this. So looking at the beliefs, the beliefs is, well, if I, if for one thing, the beliefs is that I really don't know because this is something that this, this trigger and response pattern was created when I was at a much smaller, when I was much smaller, my body was smaller, my, the, the, the ways that I know how to talk to a grown up is different. So all of those parameters it's very different now. So now that when I am at the age that I am at now, it would be a very different mindset. I would have a lot more words. I would have um, 
a wider range of emotions to draw from instead of just losing my temper. So when we look at it from the mind's point of view, we, we start to bring out the, the beliefs that supported our habitual emotional expression pattern. So we get to know what beliefs that we are unconscious of. A lot of the times we're not conscious of our beliefs. However, when we start to actually ask, so then we, we actually get to know what those unconscious beliefs are. So that's looking at our own emotional response from the mind level. And also from the mind level, we can kind of think of, okay, now that I'm, diff I'm older, now that I have more tools, now that I have a lot more um, wisdom. So what other ways can I respond instead of the, the normal losing my temper? So when we rehearse that in our mind, and start to remind ourselves more and more often that when we hear somebody's voice in a certain tone, their body language, then what are the different other options that we can experiment with to make sure that the outcome of this interaction with someone else is something that we much more prefer. So that's from looking at this from the mind's level. And then the third way is to look at it from the spirit level. So the spirit level um, really gives us a very different perspective because at the mind level and at the body level, we are still attached to our body, to our sense of self. Whereas when we kind of shift to the spirit level, the spirit, our spirit is, extends way beyond our body. We, at, from the spirit's point of view, there really is no one outside. There is only different aspects, other alternative selves. So we can look from the spirit point of view, we can start to look at, okay, so this is happening. This, this person seemingly is um, coming to me and talking to me in a certain tone of voice have a certain body language, what is it that is within me that I needed to see in order to shift and be able to learn what it is that the spirit is trying to show me to look at in a different way. So from the spirit's point of view, the spirit's point of view is kind of a moving beyond just the, the ego, moving beyond the body and to look at everything from a higher level to show us what it is that we needed to learn in that situation. So this is what looking at it, looking at the same emotional trigger and response from our body's point of view, from our mind and logical mind point of view, and from the spirit's point of view as well. And from each point of view, we would be able to expand our understanding, wisdom, and also ability to respond 
in the situation with more varieties and be able to give the best way to have the experience that we actually want to have. So this is really what our emotions is telling us. Usually when we have a trigger, there usually is a blockage, is a something that has not been worked out very smoothly before. So it is a reminder that, you know, when you're three years old, your mom talked to you in a certain tone, and, you know, so these things happen. But um, now that you are no longer three years old, when your mother talked to you in this certain tone, instead of getting triggered, you can turn it around and think of it as compassion. Is oh, I wonder what happened in my mother's life that really have her get so triggered so and and because she herself is triggered so that's why she is expressing her emotion in such a way that impacted me and because now that I have looked at my own emotions and able to smooth out and find better solutions to work with my own emotions. I no longer need to be leave that I have to defend myself. I can actually look at it from the other person's point of view and be able to understand what could have happened to them in order for them to show up the way that they are showing up right now. So the, this is the wisdom in emotions is that it reminds us of things that were left half, half baked when we were um, at a different point in life where we didn't have the right tools to, to figure out the best solution. So that emotional blockage kind of is a, a gift for us to, to remind us to look at this a similar situation when you're at a point where you have more access, that you have more tools, that it's not something that gets buried, that it's something that we can, when we notice the trigger and is able to look at it from the conscious, in a more conscious way, that we can start to shift that. And when we start to play with our emotions, we actually start to unblock our energetic body. And when our energy um, gets unblocked, more energy is available to us. And we can actually get back to no matter what age you're at, when you unblock yourself, it's like you have 10 times more energy. Whereas it's really not that you have 10 times. It's just that you have removed a block and your energy can now be circulating and available to you 
in a much more efficient way. So when we start to work with our emotional body to look at the things that were only half baked, then we start to gain an, an understanding of what our body is dealing with and has to deal with. And we can start to align the body, the mind, and the spirit in a way that they are all working congruently together and not just our you know, spirit trying to have a very out of body kind of respond. Whereas from the body's point of view, it's very real for our body to, to feel that, that threat. But when the spirit starts to work with the body and not just um, overpowering and not just ignoring, but actually working with all of our bodies to start to become congruent, then our it actually is naturally allows our own vibration to rise up higher, to be closer to where our spirit is. And that's how, and that's the benefit. And that is really the, the motivation behind being on earth with a, a spirit. The spirit does not need to be ascended anymore, whereas it is the spirit working through our body and our mind and being able to lighten or enlighten our body and mind, lift up our body and our mind to where our spirit is and when all all mind body and spirit is totally aligned whenever that may be that's when we truly becomes god that's when we actually when we think of something we have full access to our energy to manifest that's because of this congruence. And that's something that we all working towards one way or another. Don't know how long that's going to take. However, that's really what we are here on earth to do. So that's all I have to say about the emotional body.